He catches the eyes of a lot of academics, especially in, oops, um, especially in, <laughs> see, human error, I kicked my glass over. <laughs> oh, no, Victor, save us. <laughs> Victor, save us. <laughs> Welcome to Casuals of Rune Terra, episode 31. I'm your host, Ryan, here with your other host, Hedge. I made a liar out of me. I, I said yes. we were never going to be here. <laughs> I gave you the decimal point system we were working off of, and this is how you repay me. <laughs> Listen, the show must go on, all right? We can't keep them in, <laughs> in point XX forever. <laughs> point XX. <laughs> <laughs> never getting a full version update. We're here, episode 31. Yeah. That's the uh, new name of our podcast, by the way, with Point XX of Runeterra. <laughs> <laughs> so up top, we have housekeeping as always. You can listen to us everywhere and follow us on Twitter to keep up to date on episodes. That's at Podcast Core. That's Podcast C-O-R. Uh, you can send an email also to that same name at gmail.com. So please leave a like, follow, and a short review slash comment. And tell a friend to forego their flesh prison and seek optimum efficiency with the Casuals of Runeterra podcast. Yeah, we're keeping it, you know, just light and friendly around here. <laughs> Email us about your flesh prison and how much you wish to leave it. State of the game. So I'm still playing Scargrounds. Because uh, I'm enjoying it. So I haven't really ventured out, I'm staying focused, trying to start the grind again on ladder, get back into it, play a little bit here and there when I can. Um, as the new year started, like we mentioned in the last episode. Uh, so getting back to work and all that nonsense. But uh, Scar Grounds it is, and that's all Hedge's fault. So are you still playing hey, Scar Grounds? Hey, it's fun. It's fun. It I, is, it is. I kind of put it on the bench for a little bit, uh -huh. uh, started playing Scouts again. Back to the roots. Um because, you know, I might as well just beat up on people if I'm actively trying to play. But yeah. uh, I've, I have been also da dabbling with the co-op mode because uh, that was exciting for me. Already yeah. having a little bit of fun with it. I'm very upset because one of my buddies, we do a <laughs> podcast together. He won't play with me. He uh, never asked. I'm going to the DMs right now. I got the receipts. Oh, because on the episode you asked, but never pinged me oh, when you're playing? Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. No, we, we'll, we'll finish this off camera. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. We're going to court after this. Congratulations. Yeah, no, I'm driving over there and I'm hitting you after this. <laughs> oh, no, domestic violence. <laughs> I, no, I love you, man. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. See, and with, you know, that's a great way to transition into our main topic here. All that human emotion uh, into what we're talking about today. Iron Man, also God. known as Victor. Uh, Hedge has run away. We got <laughs> to get the emotions out of here. The so, inefficiency. <laughs> so disclaimer, this is probably going to be a little bit longer of an episode. Uh, Victor's lore is long. Like, it's very in-depth. It's almost like for usually you have these brief um, statements about characters kind of jumps through a couple incidents in their life and gives you the overview of uh, of who they are, where they come from. But Victor's is very in-depth. It's almost more of like the stories you get, the side stories. There's like, let's give them everything. And there's an inclusion of two other champions in here that we'll mention. Uh, but I digress. Yeah, and it is it's very important too. Like there's yes. like stuff that's outside of those champion stories that's happening that uh like the more that we get to dive into the lore, it's gonna pop up again. Like his Yeah. And we're uh, gonna reference Victor, some other other stories that people are familiar with, yeah. like other Victor's characters. Victor's well. in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so get us started here. We're gonna start with the spell like we always do. Yes, and this one we're gonna I'm gonna pick us up with something that was kind of new and something that's a lot of fun to play like if you're actively playing with victor so we're going to be looking at I iterative improvement uh this is a two mana burst speed spell that is pick a follower create a copy of it in hand with plus one plus one um so this one kind of gives you a little bit more of a um a grounded counterfeit copy effect um so it you're picking something that's in your hand and as specifically a follower 
and buffing it uh, or buffing a new copy of it. So uh, if you've got something that's going to be really effective on the board or something that's really hard to get rid of, cough, cough, elusives, cough, cough. Uh, this is a really fun card to put on it because you there's already, like, since the point of beta, trying to buff elusives has always been a a strong strategy and this is a way for you to get more elusives and buff them but the other thing with it is that since you're creating a copy of it it works towards a lot of the newer cards specifically cards with the augment keyword on it which is buffing the attack of an augment creature every time you play a created card mm -hmm. so this this card plays really well into the plays really well into that win con but of course we always look at cards here because of a uh, flavor and this one has got it because <laughs> if you read the flavor text on this one it's self-improvement is a game where you are the hero and the villain you will struggle you may even think you've won but in the end you will always be left standing in your own way jesus that's listen this is a card game all right <laughs> all right Ryan, i need you to chill out times are hard right now <laughs> there's so much truth you know, in this you know you and i have we we've, we've <laughs> talked a lot before of how we've been playing card games for years and yeah. anyone who's been at a local game store to play a card game with other people that share an interest you've met somebody that you've looked at and gone dude it's a game Come on. <laughs> Come on. And th that, that's what this flavor quote is. But yeah. it's it, it, that, that sentiment kind of plays into, you know, kind of victors. Back in my day, a Pokemon <laughs> card would say a quote like Pika Pika. And that was it. That's what you got. <laughs> nothing digging into my soul. Nothing trying to expose the human complex. <laughs> I, I would just look at it and see what their poker what their poker dex number was. Like, yeah. what, what the heck? <laughs> uh, so this, this takes us into our you know closest Pokemon here. Uh, oh yeah, like you, you know, I'm glad that you brought up Pokemon, all right? Because we're gonna <laughs> talk at Augment Chew. Um, so this is, <laughs> Augment Chew. <laughs> yeah. So the follower that I'm looking at. If you've listened to the show before, this isn't a surprise. We're looking at Neondroid, all right? <laughs> Anything that I can connect with the pursuit of perfection I'm clicking on, done. All right, so um, Neondroid, for anyone unfamiliar, is a three-mana, one-three follower with elusive and augment. Yeah. Augment, again, being the newer keyword, wherever you play a created card, give it plus one attack. Um, so this one, uh, again, th we're building a nice little army lore-wise as far as sentient cats <laughs> that are building crap. And I'm, I'm down with that. Like, I'm not even a cat person at heart, but... Yeah. I totally want to see this army of cats build Gundams and try to kill people. That's yeah. hysterical to me. Um, so, but this one is a card that like is something that can really punish boards if left ignored mm -hmm. because of that combination of augment and elusive. Yes. Again, elusives are a strategy that is something that's very difficult to deal with in room terra so it can always play as a win condition and if you have an elusive that already has an innate way to buff itself mm. without you having to put a lot of extra stuff into it that's powerful like this and it can be a real threat especially with that three health instead of just like two health or something uh followers with a more health and attack always are just stickier mm -hmm. and you want your threats to stick on the board so this is a good card and there are cards that that came out that help you uh that will help you get to cards like this and really flesh out your win conditions but uh we all know that uh, i'm a casual and i picked this <laughs> because part of the flavor text is um, part of the flavor text is that the 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 cat, the neon droid, has been dismissed as too cute 
but meow to Zahn, where I know at least one great mind shares my ambitions. That's, that's why this card's here. The man has spoken. <laughs> so let's get into the source of all this madness. Victor himself. So, like, as I warned, it's going to be a little, little chunky here uh, of some lore. So we split it into three parts, right? We have the beginning is where you start, unless you're Star Wars. But I digress. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> I did not. Oh, no. <laughs> we, so, been, we poked the Star Wars fandom. <laughs> it's over. All publicity is good publicity. <laughs> So Victor is an idealist who devotes his whole life to technology, right? And he's adamant about this vision of the bright future. And it's kind of loose the younger he is because they do start off the story with him being fairly young, like a young genius sorts. Um, he's born in Zon, so not many opportunities there as we know. And he has this love of inventing and building from the moment he's born. But one thing that stands out is he has thing, these little quirks. You call, call them quirks to start off. Or like he hated having to eat and sleep because it consumed time that he could be using to work. Uh, that's, you know. Yeah, quirk. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little quirk there. Um, and there's there's a lot of incidents that happen in Zon, as we know, uh, because it is a very reckless city. And everything that happens he narrows it down to being human error. And this kind of irks him, right? So he takes it under himself, you know, as a young man to try to fix the problems that he saw uh, around town and offer his services to companies at first, which was like, hey, let me come help you make things more efficient. Most companies are like, no, we're good. We don't need your innovations. One company does take him on. And within a month, he ends up reducing their accents to zero, right? So that's like a company's dream. Uh, to have no accidents <laughs> and to have everything running smoothly. So that gets all the other companies to be like, oh, by the way, you know, we were joking. <laughs> the first time when we said no, we actually meant yes. Hey, we, we noticed that you, the company you're working with right now has no workman's comp issues. <laughs> uh, we want that. <laughs> so we get to him being age 19 after working with these companies. He catches the eyes of a lot of academics, especially in, oops, um, Especially in, <laughs> see, human error. I kicked my glass over. <laughs> oh, no. Victor, save us. <laughs> Victor, save us. <laughs> but he catches the eyes of a lot of professors and academics. He gets invited to the Academy of Techmaturgy. Uh, but there is a famous professor from Piltover named Professor Stanwick who convinced him, hey, forget that. Get out of the slums come to a real school in Piltover instead. So that takes us up the beginning of how Victor kind of starts on his path of innovation. And we move to the middle, <laughs> which is where all good stories start. Once again, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so this move allows him a lot more resources. We've talked about the city of progress in the past, um, with Heimendinger, right? And this also leads him to team up in research with a lot of brilliant minds, but mainly the Jace, um, which if you've played the game, you know who Jace is. Very like flamboyant guy, kind of reminiscent of Batman, but not so much. Uh, and he is very smart, but he is like a very emotional creature, um, which is the antithesis of Victor, who is also very smart, but is trying to get out of that part, right? Yeah, Get we, out of that place in humanity. Yeah, we've already kind of been alluding to Victor being Iron Man, and yeah. Jace would be Tony Stark. Like, yeah, the, he, exactly. Very intelligent, but very much a playboy. Yeah, yeah. So Jace being equally smart, but his motives are more selfishly based. Like he likes to be, he likes adoration for the things he does. It's not so much for his city. Um, they never really become friends. Uh, they respect each other because they acknowledge their brilliant minds and their flaws, uh, but they never get really close. And Jace does not like at all the pure logical nature of Victor and his goals. So there's an incident that happens here, um, one of many, uh, which is a chemical spill happens in Zon. This brings Victor back to Zon to try to help out because what, one thing that's consistent through the storyline is one thing not to lose is that Victor 
is about his city. Like, you know how when you hear about like famous musicians or actresses or whatever, you, people are like, hey, you know, when you blow up, make sure you come back and help the city out. Make sure you represent your city. It's a very big deal in humankind, which is great because that drive is a very human thing. Keep that in mind. All right. So he goes back. He's helping out kind of the recovery effort post like like a post hurricane type situation. Uh, and he brings a constructed gold golem. He participated in building named Blitzcrank. <gasps> yeah, and longtime players of League of Legends, they they know that name. Yeah. There's many people like myself who were trapped in bronze <laughs> who have nightmares <laughs> of a golden medal hand just floating at them before it all goes gray yeah one minute you walk into your kitchen to get something to drink next minute you're getting uppercutted (laughs) uppercutted (laughs) into a silence questioning all of your life decisions Um, but yeah so blitzcrank uh is created as far as just to be something to help in Mm -hmm. this disaster relief and then blitzcrank kind of ends up leaving and victor's staring at him going wait is that golem sentient now (laughs) whoops whoops And that's kind of, that's there we go. There's the birth of a champion, just kind of sprinkled <laughs> into the lore of a champion that came out after Blitzcrank. I so, know, right? Yeah, I digress. No, that's actually a great point because part of him leaving is metaphorical because Blitz. Crank actually inherits a lot of that wanting to help people, wanting to give back um, when he becomes more sentient. So as he leaves, it's this divergent of Victor becoming less and less human, right? Which is why they have that difference of opinion, which is Blitzcrank goes on his own and continues to help, becomes a support character. Wink, nod. (laughs) Oh, we see you, Blitzcrank. Oh, we see you, Blitzcrank. (laughs) I see you, Blitzcrank player, building Rabadon's death cap. (laughs) You can't fool me. (laughs) Support, quote, unquote. (laughs) So this takes us into our third act here, as any good story has, um, (laughs) which is what we're going to call the Enlightenment. And there's some winking and nodding there uh, because this is what happens afterwards. So after he sees the destruction that's happening in Zon, trying to help out because they had moderate success, but it wasn't like an overall success with, with what him and Blitzcrank were doing. Uh, he comes, he gets hyper-focused on the human body, right? That's why we kind of said the flesh prison. And he clings to that idea of, okay, I want a betterment of society. I want to en- uh, enhance humans. The body is the problem. So let's focus on that. So he returns to Piltover and immediately is greeted by the Professor Stanwick taking credit for Blitzcrank completely and he's like well that's not cool so he goes to jace who is not really a friend but his closest colleague the closest thing he has to a friend at this point and jace is like i'm not going to get in the way of that because that would ruin jace's image etc etc he cares very much about his image so that leaves victor like okay well screw it i'll do what i always do and bury myself in my work um and the as far as with Victor burying himself in his work to get away from this conflict with Blitzcrank, this also kind of leads into a further separation of Jace and Victor because the only thing connecting them is their respect for each other as intellectual minds. Mm-hmm. And now Jace isn't stepping in for a fellow intellectual and his work. Yep. So – this separation continues because, again, you're going to turn to your brightest people whenever disaster or a something terrible happens in the world. So mm-hmm. Jace and Victor are called upon once again when they are collaborating to work as with underwater debris and creating diving suits for people to go down deeper into the waterways of Piltover to clean out this debris – make a cleaner water source and the suit that they designed was one of the best suits that was piltover had to offer let people go deeper but an issue that was coming up is because they were going deeper they were they were suffering from more uh kim induced hallucinations um so obviously the the kim tech in the water 
the deeper the people went was more polluted Mm -hmm. and these people started hallucinating and seeing other divers as ghosts um which i'm sure stories of nautilus probably plays into that too Mm -hmm. who knows um but uh, the divers would start to fighting each other underwater because they're all hallucinating. Um, now, if you've been paying attention, Victor's only going to respond to this in one way, which is, oh, well, the suit's not at fault. The problem yeah. is the human brain reacting to the chemicals down there. Mm-hmm. So he makes a modification to where the diver no longer has control of the suit – and someone on the surface is remote controlling <laughs> the diver. And, you know, there's there's a little bit of an ethical issue there as far <laughs> as a human emotion of free will. <laughs> and Jace points this out. As well, <laughs> as well as getting the support of literally every human around yeah. them going, yeah, yeah, no, I don't want someone calling the shots for me. Yeah. And this is where we finally start seeing the final divide between Victor and Jace. They yeah. have a very large argument. Uh, the reports there is that it almost turns violent. Yeah. And then they vow to never work with each other again. Yep. And, you know, further to just Jace and his conflict, the system gets involved and they bar him. He's essentially barred from working there, researching there, anyway, kicked out of the school. So naturally he goes back to his roots, right? He goes back to Zahn. He's like, screw it. And this is one of the things where, you know, what Riot touches on, which a lot of games don't, um, where they go back into, you know, things that you see in real life. And he goes into a deep depression. You know, I refer to when our Riven episode, you know, listen to that one where we talk about how they show uh, PTSD of a soldier in a situation that accelerates and what that does to her story um, as it progresses. So Victor going into this deep depression, going back home with, you know, this um, obsession on this idea of the, <laughs> the flesh prison, he starts to do some research. He starts to look inward and reaches a conclusion which I think, you know, from Ryan's perspective, we've talked about, is brilliant because it's this circular thought of, OK, I'm in a deep depression now because of emotions, but my goal is to transcend those. So if I am having a problem with the ethical issue of experimenting on human augmentation, why don't I just do it on myself first? And once I do it on myself... The emotion part is solved because I no longer have the ethical restraints because I'm no longer human. Therefore, I can do it to other humans. It's a big brain play. It's a big brain. It's a five head play. (laughs) I wonder wonder if Victor made his head a little bit bigger (laughs) when he augmented himself. He he, he took a laser and added like two more wrinkles onto his brain. (laughs) So we get here, we now have the Victor you know and you see in game um, with all the hex tech parts. And this allowed him to further his research. He's no longer um, shackled by the conflicts of the emotion part. And he's now bringing that to people who need it in Zon. So Zon's very poor, very distraught. So when people are in situations where that chemical burns or whatever happens where they need help, they go to him. He's like an underground doctor at this point who's furthering his research while helping the people in the way that he sees um, helping his city. And it's underground doctor in the most core sense of the word because it is even described of like, hey, you can go there if you're desperate. But <laughs> yeah. like, it, it's like a genie. you got to choose your words carefully <laughs> as far as how you want him to heal you because he might – you yeah. might turn around and be a robot. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. And it gets to the point where it's almost religious, where the people start to see him as this messiah figure, which he could care less about because he no longer cares. Right. His, his, he's now he, instead of instead of a feeling of betterment, it's a directive of betterment. It's going to happen because it is in his genetic code at this point. Yep, He was programmed this way because he programmed it. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore I can't be held responsible for the things I do. Check the code. <laughs> I'm no longer the guy who programmed me to be this guy. Oh Lord. So this takes us to another incident that happens between him and Jace, which is 
the Shuriman Desert Crystal. Yeah, uh, and, which and we like talked many, about. Yeah, yeah, like many points of the story, like this pops up because of a because of a tragedy yep. or a disaster happening in Piltover and Zaun. So there's a very there's a very big accident that happens in Zaun, and. Uh, the victims of the accident not only have a lot of physical wounds, but there's issue as far as with chemtech poisoning. And the poison is very difficult to get out, and Victor is aware and able to see that he can only slow down the poison. He does not have the technology to stop it. So Mm -hmm. after trying to track down a power source that would give him the juice needed to create the technology to stop the poison, it leads him to Jace's lab. And without going too deep into Jace's story, what he's tracking down to Jace's lab is actually a crystal from the Shuriman desert. Mm -hmm. Um, or well, the de- desert of Sharima, and yeah. as far as this crystal, it's a unknown property to the people of Valorant at this time, mm-hmm. um, or the people uh, specifically built over in Zon, and it's given to Jace for study. Because remember, there's this rift, and Victor's been censored, so there's only one mind that they can take it to at that point, and that's mm-hmm. Jace. And Victor asks Jace, give me the crystal. I need it to save these people. Jace obviously says, no, What? why is a robot talking to me? You sound like Victor. <laughs> Victor goes, no is not acceptable. We shall now be t- removing the you know, robotic <laughs> voice. We shall now be taking the crystal. And so then there's a fight and a yeah. large battle happening at Jace's lab. And it ends with Victor taking this crystal and returning it to Zahn to save the lives of these people who've been poisoned, who he's only been able to just kind of slow down the process of death. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, with all of this new power and juice in the lab, Victor beefs up the lab and starts making these people into some crazy golems yep. and does so until Jace comes back <laughs> to take the crystal but in the fight that happens in the lab they end up destroying victor's lab and destroying the crystal and the end effect of that is that the crystal has gone jace is touted as a hero Mm -hmm. stopping this mad scientist lab and victor is only looking at it as the failings of flesh. (laughs) (laughs) I love the reference to at the end of the story here where they say he didn't send automatons after this again as revenge. He was just checking for another crystal. And in my head, I'm like, logically, the chances of there being another cosmically powerful crystal in Jace's lab, all right, Victor, very low. (laughs) You should know that of all people. You you robot. You're a robot. You... Don't do not tell me that you're going to do all these modifications on yourself to remove human error and not yeah. put a calculator in there. <laughs> all right? You put a calculator in there, you can do the math. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. he, you know, he doesn't go on a revenge plan. He just sends a bunch of murder bots to Jace's lab yeah. on a scouting mission. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so after all this, you know, his Victor's lab is destroyed, like Hetch mentioned. And this brings us to Victor escaping, Jace doing his whole hero act and going back to his life because he's he focuses on himself. And then Victor continues to find a way. He's like, I'm going to better humanity, whether they like it or not. And it's described as Victor's glorious evolution. And that's the directive. And that's where we're left off. And, you know, after all that, you know, like I said, this is very this is a very long, probably the longest story we've done yet um, up to this point. So all that being said, is this a story that you see in a lot of good comic books where you have this kind of you have not really a villain and a hero, but you have two conflicting ideologies that are in this gray area. Right. Um, Right. And watching those two clash is what we're looking at here. It's not so much about Victor. We get so much about Jace here, too. And when we get to Jace, we will have more to talk about his background, um, which will involve Victor's story as well and probably give us more information there. Uh, as well, but yeah, this was a very well done uh, chunk chunk of lore 
in my oh, opinion. And amazingly well done. I, I think that you could present this just without like name plates yep. to many people that have no that have no knowledge of like League of Legends and Runeterra, and then they would just kind of like be interested to try to like okay well what happens to these two next yeah You're like they because it is it it's even set up like yeah we're joking about like sending murder bots on a scouting mission <laughs> we're joking about it but like victor after that scouting mission victor doesn't think about jace anymore yeah because like that jace has nothing to do with the glorious evolution <laughs> whereas the, jace yeah. it, Jace is being touted at that point as a superhero, essentially. Yeah. Like he, he, we, you know, we make the comparisons to like Bruce Wayne and Tony yes. Stark, and he's very much like that, especially at this point of the story, because he stopped this mad scientist that was turning people into robots. Yeah. Uh, even though that's not actually what's happening, and that's what makes it a good story. Is like there's all this yeah. stuff we know that's happening underneath the surface. This is definitely like we, we. I referenced Age of Ultron. Um, you referenced uh, Doc Ock from the Spider Man series. Uh, there's also a good book out there that we uh, I told Hetch about called uh, King's Dark Tidings, which has a main character who's sort of similar to to Victor. It's very interesting if you want to check that out. But I like these character types where you have the super logical conflict with the betterment of humanity, and to see those intertwine and overlap with outside characters is always it's always good 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 story writing. Yeah. Um, to come from that. Absolutely. And so now we got to talk about the card, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a card. This is a card game, baby. <laughs> this is a card game. Um, so, Victor, the card is a four cost, two, four. And this is kind of anti anticlimactic because it, right now everybody sees him as a very weak card at the moment. Um, yeah. The cards that came out alongside him are more powerful and more useful across the board. They're, they're, there's more. Um, uh, malleability with other deck styles where he's very specific. Um, but he has augment and round start, create a hex core upgrade in hand. And to level him up, it's you've played eight plus creative cards. So to level, level him up is very easy. And the uh, hex core upgrades are just upgrades like most cards you see that are generated that give you some kind of additional ability on top, but they grant the ability. So once you get it, he has it. Yeah. Right? Like, They're Vic Victor is one of those things with the hex core upgrades where it's like, yeah, he's not a good card on his own. But then if you invest like five more mana into him, yeah. all of a sudden it's a threat that's very, very, very difficult to get off the board. Yep. But that's, you know, a five mana investment. <laughs> yeah. So we get the flip Victor who goes to a three five here. He still has augment. And now he has you created you created a card cost one less. So when you ever create a card, take one off of it and then round start, create a card, essentially. Uh, and that's when it starts to get out of hand because he's very easy to flip throughout the game. And if you can get him to stick and protect him, then it starts to get stupid, um, which is it, it, it's, it's almost I mean, if you look back at the lore real quick, it's this snowball effect. Right. We talked about how it all started with him wanting to get rid of sleep and sleeping and eating so they had more time to work and it yeah. snowballed and snowballed when you put more and more into him and facilitated him more, gave him more resources where it became a problem. Yeah. Uh, you start out as a high schooler trying to nap in between your extracurriculars. <laughs> you end up a mad scientist with murder robots. <laughs> the age old story. <laughs> That's the American dream, baby. <laughs> so, so no matter how long the episode, we we always have to get to the point where it's time for Hedge. Oh no! To undergo a question and or challenge. Uh, so this one fits our episode. I don't think I've ever asked ask you this off stream. So this one should be interesting to see what oh you come boy. up with. Okay. If you had to replace one body part with an augment. What would you replace? Ooh. And it's one. So, like, if you choose arm, not both arms, you got to pick one. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. You want me to go first? Yeah. Oh, no, no. No, sorry. I'm the host. Here about, we go. I'm like, I'm looking gotta, at you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like look, look, look. You took, you took episode 29 point X away from me <laughs> for your formula. So we're sticking to your format. I stopped Hetch's <laughs> glorious evolution of the show. My own glorious evolution of 29. <laughs> 
So for me, it's a little cheating because I've, I've had this question with other people before. It's, it's a question I bring up a lot, like just at bars and stuff, because it's always fun to see what people come up with. Um, mine is my right knee or leg. Um, because I've had multiple knee surgeries on my right knee and it just like anatomically, when you look at the human body, it's an amazing thing, right? It's an amazing feet. And and not like feet, but like <laughs> Oh my lord. <laughs> But the the flaws, the biggest flaws in the human body are the knees and ankles because there's nothing you can do. A lot of our body has protective muscle around it. Um, so you can build those muscles to protect. But when it comes to the knee and the ankles, they just are what they are until they're gone. <laughs> and get they wear down get. fairly quickly. There's no real way around it. And it's a part of I know like in surgeries and stuff like that where doctors are trying to find ways to like even now knee replacement is – uh, on the trajectory to less be a conditional thing and be like, hey, if we get knee replacements to a place where technology wise, they make sense to the betterment of human legs, let's just make them a requirement at some age because it would just be better than having your busted up uh, bone knees. As we currently have, they're just grinding cartilage. So that's one place where I always go, yeah, my right leg, take it. I don't need it. Uh, yeah, just take the whole leg. You yeah, know what? Give leg. me the crutches. You don't even have to replace it. <laughs> Just take the leg. I'm tired of this. <laughs> All right. I, 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 um, a little different. Um, okay. <laughs> a little different. So, Pinky toe. Uh, I, it, no, it's going to be the brain. And thus, if you take oh, the brain, my God. if you take the brain, that's also like the, the heart <laughs> of your nervous system. All right. Yeah. So then what would end up happening is that I would be freed of the flesh prison. Because <laughs> when the body, when the body would give out, as long as the brain still got juice, it's still going. All right. And then, and so then if I lose a body, then I don't have to sleep and I don't have to eat anymore. Techno like, zombie. I think Victor's onto something. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I put, we put all that work yeah. in this episode just to convert uh, Hatch. And, and on top of that, because, you know, it's not a real episode of Runeterra until I out myself as a weeb. If I <laughs> no longer have to eat and sleep, then that gives me the time I need to actually catch back up on One Piece. <laughs> So yeah, it'd be my brain. <laughs> you see what you did, Japan? <laughs> Why are you letting One Piece run so long? <laughs> it's ruining society. <laughs> How could you oh, do this? Man. Shonen Jump, answer for your crimes. Oh, man. <laughs> I can just see a news, like a news uh, clip of just the, the extremist organization form known as Victor's Glorious Evolution, also known as VGE, has, has simulated <laughs> multiple participants as they seek to consume more anime. And you know they'll just run with that. Oh, yeah. Like that's just, media will take that and just take it. That's so. like three months of content for them. <laughs> At least. Like the moment that you think it's dying down and the news is going to pop up and it's going to be yeah. with like a distraught mother crying about the loss of their kid to anime. <laughs> the VGE has struck again. My robot son is consuming so much anime. <laughs> All he talks about is Attack on Titan. <laughs> Oh, never a dull moment, but with that, as always, thanks for listening, and we'll be back soon with the next episode. Yeah, take care, everybody.